I want to talk about loving one another because I feel like it's something that is so lacking in the churches. A lot of it is going through the motions. It's a ritual, a ceremony, if you will. But that's not what God calls us to. In John 14, one of the things that he's that Christ says, He says in verse 15, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Uh, and whatever you ask him. That. That's the verse before. <coughs> we go back to, to John 13, verse 34. It says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. If you have love for one another. That is so important. What do you read in... First Peter <coughs> one of the things you read in First Peter one twenty two talks about purifying the heart, but it says for a sincere love of the brethren. A sincere love of the brethren, that is very important. Yeah, verse 22. Since you have an obedience to the truth, truth being Torah, purified your souls for a sincere love of the brethren. For don't love one another from the heart, for you have been born not of seed which is perishable, but imperishable. That, that living and enduring word of God. Love. Scripture says God is love in several places. And we can refer to 1 Corinthians 13 about if I have the gift of prophecy and all, all these things but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I do this and do that but do not have love, I am nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not, it does not count a wrong suffered. Also, you read in Romans 5.28, uh, 5.8, not 5.28, 5.8, where it says, God demonstrated his love for us, and then while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now let's go to 1 John and see some of the things it has to say. He had to say about love. First John chapter 3, starting in verse 15. Uh, actually, let's start in 14. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brethren, he who does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in him? Little children. That's one of those, those things. Seeing someone in need and doing something about it if you can. Little children, let, let us not love with the word or tongue, but indeed, people can say, oh, I love you. 
Well, can they prove it? Will they prove it? Indeed, and in truth, we will know by we will know by this that we are in the truth, and we assure our heart before. And at one point, it says, "You know, we we will receive what we ask for." because we keep the commandments. Then we go down to verse 23. It says, This is his commandment, that we believe in the name, the character of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he had commanded us. The one who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. What commandments? The Ten Commandments? The... the extension of those in Exodus 21 through 23 because the Ten Commandments are in Exodus 20 also in Deuteronomy 5 are the Ten Commandments and you'll find different things also in Deuteronomy about how we treat our neighbor you know, that we watch out for them, that we make sure that they're animal, uh, make sure to watch that their animals don't uh, wander off, things like that, because that's their livelihood. If you're a rancher nowadays, every cow you lose is money out of your pocket. It's money you, you could have made to support the ranch for the year. Um, and ranchers will understand that. Um, it says in verse 24, The one who keeps his commandments and abides in him, and he in him, we know this, that he abides in us by the Spirit. And it talks about the Spirit confessing, we go to First uh, John 4, verse 7. Be loved. Let us love one another, for love is, of God, is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. And it's hard to find that in the churches a lot of times, it seems like. Oh. Uh, loving for, you know, caring, knowing that, uh, acknowledge that people are there. There are people that will hide in the corner when you go to church. Bring them out. Let them know that, let them know that you see them. Acknowledge them. But don't let it end just at the church door or the, the walls of the church. You know, check on people. Be, ask you know, if there's anything that they need prayer for, uh, those kind of things. That's how part of how we show love. And if you read five love languages, you have physical touch, you have quality time, you have at, uh, words of affirmation, which is important for a lot of people. Acts of service and gifts. And those are some of the ways that people receive love. Not everyone receives love in the same way. So we sometimes we have to watch people and see what do they complain about? What do they appreciate? And start to show them love in the way that they can accept it best. And caring for people. Why do people get on social media and stuff? To be known. Let people know that you care. But you're not going to you're not going to genuinely care unless you're abiding in Christ. How do you do that? You keep the commandments. Abide in Him. That's the whole point. 
He is the living Torah. Abide in Him. Let the Holy Spirit work in your life. Have an obedient heart. Those are key in in this walk. Uh, you know, if you say you love God and hate your enemy, you're a liar. Plain and simple. And it says at one point in First uh, John four, for uh, God is love, and one who abides abides in. And God abides in him. For us, God is love, and the one who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. But this love is perfected with us, so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in the world. There's no no fear in love. Yeah, if we love God. Fear is the beginning of wisdom, not the end. Uh, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear, because fear involves punishment, and the one who fears is not perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. And if we look at ourselves as the chief of sinners, we're not going to judge other people. And we're going to love them no matter what. There are people that have never experienced love in their life. And that's why they're in some of the th situations that they are. is because they've never experienced that love. No one has ever shown them the love that they need. For if someone says, I love God, and hates his brother, this is start, verse 20, he's, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, that the, that the one who loves God should love his brother. That's one of the marks of being... A believer is having a love for others. Love for our brothers. And we need to foster that. It's not so easy to do sometimes, I know. But get to know people. Sit in different places in a church. If you go to church all the time, sit in different pews from time to time. Get to know everyone in that church to some degree. And that's how we change the world is that's how we become a light to the world is through our love for one another. And he as he says they will know you are my disciples by your love for one another. Shalom shalom.